Uh, you know, T.R. Smith is one of our favorite board members. <laughs> and he is such, he's a stitch. But I, I'm never sure if he's really kidding me or not. And he came up to me at the break and he goes, uh, you know this fiber stuff, Chris? You know, I had fiber this morning. <laughs> he goes, if I get high-speed fiber, what's that going to do for me? <laughs> Thank you for your contribution, TR. <laughs> 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 <That's all right. laughs> so, so much uh, to learn today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'd ask each one of you to write down three things that you're going to do, that you're going to do, not just what you take from the meeting, but actions that you're going to follow up on now to capitalize on the investment that's been made by your time. Um, the idea of 10% technology, 90% sociology, and that it begins, the whole process begins with listening, such a good, good point. Uh, most successful sales, the most successful sales uh, 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 experiences are from listening to prospects. The idea of inclusion, uh, very important. Our next speaker um, has made that one of the core missions of her life uh, and her service in, in business. But one of the bottom lines, I believe, for our board, for the Kane County Board, is that because there's a user cash flow, Kane County can and wants to make strategic infrastructure investments to link and, and, and produce connectivity to support and partner with 530,000 constituents. Our board supports growth and uh, we've paid down debt by half. We've cut our debt in half in the last four years or so. And so we have capacity to be uh, good, useful partners as long as there's cash flow to make sure that we can fulfill our obligation. Now, it is a special privilege for me today. You've given me a privilege to introduce our final keynote speaker. Uh, I'll tell you what I like so much about Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle, without whose strong and disciplined leadership, there would not be regional coordinated effort for economic development and more important than just economic development, I think for a human advancement. Um, Tony is, uh, excuse me, uh, Madam President uh, Preckwinkle is, is gifted with intelligence, uh, her bachelor's and master's degree out of the University of Chicago, and then persistence. You really do need to um, go to, like, uh, whether it's Google or Wikipedia, read her background, her political background of how she got to where she is and how she ran three times in what some people say, you can't beat the, like the Chicago machine or people are in there for 15 years and you can never take them on if you feel that you have a better contribution to make. But three times she ran at that wall and the third time she vaulted over it and uh, became an alderman and then served uh, uh, well and then has advanced uh, all the way to uh, one of the most powerful positions uh, in, the United, uh, in, in the United States. One, another one of the secrets to her success and one of the things that I like so much about her is that she respects and listens to her constituents. Another thing is that she thinks for herself on behalf of her citizens that she serves. And then finally, she tells it like she sees it. Uh, I, I mean this in only the most uh, respectful and positive way, but you know in politics these days, you see the rise of a, a Bernie Sanders and a Donald Trump, and when people say, what's going on here? And some folks say that it's a matter of, of uh, candor, uh, authenticity, uh, not r political rhetoric. But I can tell you that the lady who's going to speak now, decades before it was fashionable, that's what Tony Preckwinkle was, and that is authentic and strong leader, intelligent, big heart. So, Tony, thank you very much. For Good morning. I want to thank Chris for that kind introduction. And I want to thank him, too, for inviting me here today. 
I'm happy to be here and to see so many people in the audience. I want you to know that your chairman and I have been working together on a number of important initiatives for the last two and a half years. And Chairman Lausen has, has been a real leader on the issues of economic growth for our region and a terrific partner. I'm grateful to him. The short title of my remarks today is Connections. I was asked to talk about some of the initiatives that the seven counties of metropolitan Chicago and the city of Chicago have undertaken to grow our economy, and I'm pleased to do that. But before reporting on what we've accomplished so far, I want to make three points about our regional economy. Shortly after I was elected president of the county board, I created a council of economic advisors consisting of business and civic leaders. Let me just say my, my chief of staff at the time, Kurt Summers, said, the President of the United States has a Council of Economic Advisors. We should have one. So the assignment of our Council of Economic Advisors was to help me better understand our economy and how we might improve it. It's been a valuable learning experience for me, history teacher that I am. Here are three of the most important issues we identified in, in Partnering for Prosperity, the report of our Council of Economic Advisors. First, the economy is changing and changing rapidly. Those of us of a certain age, that's with a little gray hair, recall a post-war economy that was much different than today's global economy. The new economy is based on innovation and knowledge, so education and training become the bedrock of economic growth. Regions, which aren't simply defined by city or county lines, are the new competitive landscape in the global economy. It's become abundantly clear that inclusive growth, inclusive growth, fuels the region's economic growth. The regions that can deploy their entire human and business assets do better because they perform better, generate greater productivity, and reduce poverty. Let me just say, the strongest regions in the country have the least inequality. The strongest regions in the country have the least inequality. Leaving parts of the region behind or simply ignoring them does not work. Second, because the economy is now different, our approach to economic development has to be different. Gone are the days when it's enough to advertise that our region has a great airport, great universities, and that we can offer tax breaks. The economy is regional, and we need to approach it from a regional perspective. So here's an important fact. Less than 1%, less than 1% of net new jobs created in any given year are the result of business relocation. Historically, we've put a lot of emphasis on attraction and trying to get businesses to come from other places to our communities or our, our, our cities. New jobs are overwhelmingly created by existing businesses. I'll say that again. New jobs are overwhelmingly created by existing businesses that grow by the creation of more jobs on their sites. A business that moves from Schaumburg to downtown Chicago is not economic development or that moves from Chicago to St. Charles or St. Charles to Chicago. No new jobs are created. The only real win winners are the companies that move. Third, the Council of Economic Advisors keeps reminding me that despite our considerable assets, and we have wonderful assets, our region is struggling. Most of you probably read in the paper the recent headline, Chicago area sees the greatest population loss of any major U.S. city or region in 2015. Slow population growth or population declines usually mean that we're not creating enough jobs to support our population. The unemployment rate in our region was 6.6% in 2015. That's the highest rate among the 10 largest metropolitan regions in the country. I offer these figures not to discourage you, but to suggest that what we are doing in the past may not be working now. And it's time to rethink what we're doing about our shared economy. With these three points as a framework, let me tell you what I and Chairman Lausen and our counterparts in the other counties have been doing to break down longstanding barriers. First, we met in December of 2013 at the Federal Reserve Bank in downtown Chicago. It was a small group of elected officials and business leaders from across the region. We heard from officials at the bank about the state of our economy, and we pledged to work together to see if we could collectively grow that economy. 
Since then, we've continued to meet. Again, that's two and a half years. And we've created four separate cooperative initiatives. One of the first things we tackled was how to rationalize the Byzantine truck permitting system in the region for overweight and oversized vehicles. Now you have to understand that Chicago, of course, is the capital of the Midwest. Our region is the, the, the catalyst for most of the development in the Midwest. So logistics is really important. We've got a lot of railroads. Five of the six largest railroads in the country come through this region. There's a lot of intermodal activity taking goods from, from trains to trucks and trucks to trains. So this truck per permitting is really important. But you need to know that a trucker needs a separate permit for each jurisdiction it crosses. So that's a logistical nightmare. This delays the movement of goods and increases the cost of business. Now, let me just say, credit to all of you, Kane County leads the region in addressing this problem. And a few years ago, simplified the system, demonstrating that it can be done. That's helpful to all the rest of us. Kane County handles the permitting for all of its townships. Currently, Cambridge Engineering is working with all of the counties, the state, and municipalities to identify some short-term and long-term improvement options based on the good work that Kane County has already done. So that's one, truck permitting. Two, Metro Chicago exports. Another startling figure. Only 6% of small businesses export. Only 6%. Metro Chicago exports, which again is this regional initiative, help small and medium-sized businesses to do that. One of its hallmark programs is the Export Grant Program. In the first year, Metro Chicago Exports provided 54 grants worth approximately 225000 to manufacturers across the region to reduce the costs of going global, to help them with capacity building, in other words. Kane County saw the impact of the program and stepped up and put an additional $50,000 in the pot to assist Kane County businesses. Thank you, Chairman Lousen. I, <coughs> I want to say that, that this initiative, uh, Metro Chicago Exports, is accepting applications for 2016 right now. Where are you, Tom? Stand up. So Tom Holtzman is the director of Metro Chicago Exports. If you have a business and you're interested in exports or you know somebody who might be, you should find Tom by the end of the meeting. The Illinois Champ, thank you, Tom. The Illinois Chamber of Commerce, in conjunction with the Illinois Economic Development Association, recently awarded Metro Chicago Exports one of its EDI awards in recognition of the companies and organizations that imagine, design, invest, and build in Illinois, and by doing so, bring jobs, growth, and prosperity to our communities. Three, Chicago Metro Metal Consortium. It's up and running. It has leveraged $36 million in new resources to support manufacturing. So our region doesn't really um, make much steel anymore, but it's a very strong metalworking, metal fabricating center. 173 firms in metals and machineries have reported a combined $279 million, $279 million in aggregate impact, sales increases, investment, and cost savings, including the creation of 400 jobs and the retention of 1,100 jobs as a result of this initiative. It's fostered more than 400 connections for businesses to increase sales through regional matchmaking events. I went to one of those. It was fascinating. Chicago Metro Metal Consortium will continue to offer metal and machinery manufacturers services and resources to grow their businesses through collaboration, networking, and increase market in intelligence. The, Met the Metro Metal Consortium promotes the region as the nation's leading center for production technology. Finally, foreign direct investment, what they call FDI. As you may have noticed, foreign-owned businesses play an increasingly important role in the region. Research shows that these businesses often pay higher wages, invest in more, more in research and development, and ultimately export more. In partnership with the Brookings Institution, we've started to develop a plan to attract and leverage foreign direct investment in the region. So we're proud of what we've done so far, these four initiatives. Truck permitting, the focus on exports, Metro Metal Consortium and foreign direct investment. We're proud of what we've done so far. We've gotten to know and trust each other. We accept the fact that we're all in this together. This is an entirely voluntary approach to regional work, and it's been successful so far. 
for the most part, we've managed to do what we have with existing staff and resources, but it's beginning to strain those resources and limit our effectiveness, and it's not sustainable in the long run, especially as we expand what we do. At the last meeting of our group, we heard from Tom Clark, who's president of Metro Denver. He spoke to us about Denver's resurgence from the late 1980s, not that long ago, when it had an office rate vacancy of 30 percent, and Colorado was rated as the 48th least attractive state for manufacturing, distribution, headquarters, and research. The 48th out of 50 states. In July of 2015, Denver led Forbes' 2015 list of best places for business and careers. Quite a turnaround. Metro Denver is, create, is credited with playing a major role in the region's change of fortunes. It's a multi-county effort that provides core data for each of the jurisdictions, helps them all with business leads, and has a non-compete mechanism that keeps jurisdictions from poaching from one another. It has successfully advocated for major investments in infrastructure to serve the entire region, focused on foreign direct investment, and identified targeted industries to pursue and support. It's 100 percent privately funded. Through our work with exports and foreign direct investment, we've become acutely aware that Chicago is one of the few regions in the country that does not have a public-private partnership that effectively represents the region's interests. Metro Denver is not unique. There are regions all over the country that are making real progress working together in more formal structures. San Diego, Minneapolis-St. Paul, upstate New York, and our neighbor to the north, Milwaukee, all have robust regional economic development organizations. These areas speak powerfully and work collaboratively with one regional voice. Across the country, these organizations undertake a range of activities to implement existing local economic development ecosystems. Regional economic development organizations provide regional data and analytics, program design, program management, strategic development, and marketing services to enhance and strengthen the work of local organizations. When I consider the data that I mentioned earlier, I believe it's more important than ever to consider new ways of doing things. The title of today's event, Connections, underscores what we have to do, make new connections to support and strengthen our economy. After hearing about Denver's renaissance, as well as others around the country, my peers from other counties in the region and I have agreed that it's time we seriously explore how we could better work together, including a more formal structure for our collaboration. Our staffs have begun to consider these options and we'll be reporting back in September. This is one case where I believe the whole is far greater than the sum of the parts, and I'm convinced that a regional economic entity which would enhance all of our ability to grow the region far beyond what we are able to do individually is in order. Again, I want to thank you for your attendance today, and I hope that we have a time to take a few questions. Thank you very much.